Please stand. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is he evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, Heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful, and you love your whole creation, and we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with Psalm 118, beginning at verse 19. And then we will stand to sing, to speak the glory be to the Father at the conclusion of the psalm. Psalm 118, beginning at verse 19, half verse by half verse. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and be give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me. The stone that the builders rejected. This is the Lord's doing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Save us, we pray, O Lord. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. So to keep me from being too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My pow- for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, 
persecutions and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Annas, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it would be expedient for that one man should die for the people. Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he entered with Jesus into the court of the high priest, but Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to the servant girl who kept watch at the door and brought Peter in. The servant girl at the door said to Peter, You also are not one of of the man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the servants and the officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I have said to them. They know what I said. When he had said these things, one of the officers standing by struck Jesus with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If what I said is wrong, bear witness about the wrong. But if what I said is right, why do you strike me? Annas then set him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. So they said to him, You are also one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of the man whose, Peter, whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it. And at once the rooster crowed. So far the gospel reading. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. John introduces another character from our Lord's Passion. If you've ever felt shame or disgrace, it was his whisper that crushed your heart. If you've ever felt alone or abandoned, it was all according to his plan. If you've ever felt useless, And no good, it was his accusing finger that was pointing at you. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy everything. Though unseen, he's still very real. What's his name? Guilt. Maybe there's somebody in this world who hasn't known guilt. A deep pit of remorse. An ongoing note to self, you're worthless. 
but I've never met that person. So what sucked you under? A one-night stand? A physical altercation? Did you take something that didn't belong to you? Or maybe your guilt isn't a result of one moment, but a season of life. You failed as a parent. You blew it in your job opportunities. You squandered your youth and your money, or both. The result, guilt. Today's witness to Christ's passion is St. Peter, and Peter is no stranger to guilt. He's in the courtyard of the high priest, Caiaphas. In that courtyard, we see guilt, Peter's guilt, but also our own guilt. Yet beyond the courtyard, we see grace. Grace for Peter and grace for us. To get into the story, rewind back to Gethsemane, where we hear the promise, Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. You know, Jesus and Peter had been so, through so much together. Three years earlier, Jesus was walking on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus sees Peter fishing and his brother Andrew, and he calls them to follow him. I will make you fishers of men. One day, about a year after that, Peter follows Jesus out onto the Sea of Galilee during this huge storm, and Peter walks on water. He follows Jesus into the sea, and yet he begins to, G, Peter begins to sink. So he reaches out his hand, and Jesus grabs him, grabs hold of Peter, and saves his life. Another point Peter says to Jesus, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Another time, Jesus takes Peter, along with James and John, to see the glory of his transfiguration on that mount. Then Jesus invites this same inner circle to witness his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. It's no wonder that Peter makes that promise. I will lay down my life for you. We've all made that promise when we were confirmed. Do you intend to live according to God's word in faith and word and deed and remain true to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even to death? And we all said, I do. Will you take this man to be your wedded husband? And you women said, I do. Will you take this woman to be your wedded wife? And we men said, I do. The promise? That's the easy part. As the events in the courtyard begin to unfold, it's like watching the cracks in a house's foundation slowly spread apart. A servant girl comes up to Peter and says, You also are... Not one of that man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. The first crack. Peter stands by the fire to warm himself. Some bystanders say to him, You also are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. The second crack. When there are enough cracks, there is always a collapse, always. And here it is. One of Malchus's relatives spots Peter and asks, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter again denied it, and at once the rooster crowed. Let those words sink in. A rooster crowed. The result? Guilt. For us, this collapse happens whenever we say, just one more drink, just one more lie, just one more time, just one more look, the foundation splits because one more leads to one more leads to one more and just one more. 
When there are enough cracks, there will always be a collapse. Always. Then what? Enter the G word. The G word? Guilt. After the rooster crowed, guilt crushed Peter. He was a has-been, marginalized, left out, a reject. And that's what guilt does to us. Guilt makes us miserable, weary, angry, dishonest, and stressed out people. Who would love us? God does. And God gives grace. Grace? How does that happen? Fast forward to John chapter 21, where Jesus asked Peter if Peter loves him. And Jesus asked the same question three times. Once for every time Peter has denied the Lord. And each time Peter confesses, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Peter confessed his guilt. What gave him the faith to do that? While Peter was denying Jesus, Jesus was suffering and dying for Peter. You know, Jesus doesn't wait until we have it all together. Jesus doesn't wait until we've overcome all our temptations and fight and fought all our demons and conquered all our sins. God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In our courtyard, we see guilt. Beyond the courtyard, though, we see something else. We see the cross, and we see grace. And grace means redemption. Grace means another chance. Who preaches the sermon at Pentecost? Peter. Whose sermon, by the power of the Holy Spirit, converts 3,000 people? Peter's. Who writes two books in the New Testament? Peter. Now listen closely. Redemption doesn't depend on how much we love Jesus. It depends on how much he loves us. Redemption doesn't depend on how much we do for Jesus. Redemption depends on what he does for us. Redemption doesn't depend on our giving our life for Jesus. Redemption depends on Jesus giving his life for us. Remember that unseen enemy that still stalks us? Guilt? We must see guilt for what he really is. A deadly monster? You bet. A painful feeling that can do us great harm? No doubt. The tormentor of our souls? Count on it. But you better count on this as well. Guilt is a defeated enemy. And it has no weapons left. They've been exhausted in trying to defeat God's Son. What's that mean for us? Our story isn't over when Jesus is in it. We're all redeemed from guilt. How? By the best G word of all. Grace. Amen. The peace of God which passes on our standing. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For our synodical and district presidents, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. For our elected officials, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give unto us, that serv uh, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen.